this old ferry boat for 22 years, from Staten Island to Manhattan and back again in the evening. That is, if I'm not working nights, and in my line of work, that occurs more often than not. Over the years, I kept thinking I should have moved into the city. Most everybody thought I would when my wife died six years ago. But I couldn't make the break from Staten Island. Besides, that's where my clothes are. There's no lady in my life right now except that one over there, and although I do love to see her, she's only a passing acquaintance. You probably wonder what I'd do. If you haven't already guessed, I'm a cop. A detective, actually. And that might sound exciting, but after 22 years, I'm still waiting for the headline with my name in it. Did you hear about Larry Pergola for 39? What, the new kid? Yeah, young hotshot. Busted a counterfeit ring uptown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big headlines. How come we never read about any old hotshots? Look at this guy, he drives like my grandmother. This makes me crazy. You know, we're not gonna make it on time. The hooker's gonna come and go. Yeah, tragedy. Another penny any criminal slips the clutches of the law. John, John, don't do that, all right? It's against regs, please. Brendan, no guts, no glory. Just step on it, okay? Yeah. I hope you guys appreciate this. I mean, there's no law says I had a call. Yeah, I'll put you up for a citation, okay? The hooker show up yet? Yeah? Any time now. Can we just see the stuff, please? I said there was more. I said to bring it in this morning. We deal. Yeah, it checks. It's from the booth on 74th and Park. I is there some kind of a reward or something? You're the gratitude of your fellow New Yorkers. Is there some place where we can wait without being seen? Follow me. Very nice. Oh, wife, guys, you try to do the right thing, and then there's no thanks, nothing. Just work. I'm going to close it up someday. It's what I'm going to do. You know, this is what keeps me in police work. Drama. Hey, John, you're killing me with that pipe. So don't breathe. It's a blonde kid in tight leather pants. It's not the hooker. Why does he give me the high sign? Wake up and smell the coffee, Brendan. Freeze, police. Wonderful. Where do you work at? Knock it off. Listen, I could give you something. Yeah, I bet you could. I didn't steal that stuff, all right? Yeah, listen, kid, you heard your rights. Talks, you roll the dice. There's no guarantees. I, listen, I see this guy Wally once or twice a month, you know, when he's got the buckaroos. I saw him days ago, and then he gave this as a present. It was a nice. Uh, you didn't know it was stolen, right? I didn't ask for a receipt, okay? 
Anyway, we had our little party, and he was drunk and snow blind, and he starts bragging like to impress me, you know? Tells me these presents are nothing compared to what he promised me, a Jaguar, just like his partner drives. Is that rich? This is a coffee clutch. Get the car. Wait, listen! They're, they're, they're planning something, man. They're planning something really big. Now, if I tell you, I want your word that you'll talk to your people for me. What kind of something? How big? You promise? Let's see what I can do. What are we talking about? Diamonds. Twelve and a half million scoots worth. Let's get in the car, son. Twelve and a half million, man. I'm not lying! You never know. You got a trick, boy, with a head full of smoke and a pocket full of stolen goods singing you a song about a diamond heist, and you want to put it on the hit parade. Granted, it's a reach, but the facts jive. The Heritage Gallery uptown is holding a diamond auction in 10 days, 12.5 million worth. Now, the kid says these guys have a woman inside the gallery working with them. Is it going to hurt to check? John, please, you got real work to do. Forget about it. Give me 24 hours. Look, if we don't turn something, we'll go back to your nickels and dimes. You believe him? If it pans out, it could be the biggest diamond heist in history. 100 bucks is all smoke. Covered. You got 24 hours. Yeah, I told the kid I'd see at the DA deal. You come up with something solid, we'll then talk to the DA. Meanwhile, that kid spends a little vacation time in the slammer. Get some bad news between there and here that I missed? Think about it, John. This is nuts. This Wally character is a third-rate burglar who has to buy company. Now, do you really think he can pull a job like this? You know, some people aren't afraid to dream big. It's what made this country great. Donahue. You Rollins? Yeah, my partner, Brendan Thomas. I got your message, and it's bull, pure bull. It's head of security, I run a tight ship here. Well, I don't doubt that, but we're just a couple of working stiffs doing our job, so I guess the sooner we can talk to your ladies, the quicker we'll be out of your hair. All right, but I don't want to start a panic. Well, we'll kid glove it all the way, okay? How many women do you have working for you? Uh, 19, including janitorial. You're gonna be here all day. Looks like it. Waste of time, believe me. Well, we have everything we need. I mean, we won't trouble you anymore. Thank you. No trouble at all. Fruit? No, thank you. You. Uh, thanks for trying to diet. <clears throat> I, you know, actually, I am gonna have a banana. Thank you. You're welcome. Could be dangerous, huh? Ma Barker was no spring chicken. Who's next? Right here. Sarah Holden. Miss Holden, these men are police officers. Detectives Rawlings and Thomas, they'd like a word. Did I forget to pay a traffic ticket? Uh, nothing like that, Miss Holden. Thanks, Jerry. Well, this is uh, beautiful work. This is very mysterious. Oh, not really. It's just a routine procedure. I wasn't aware the Heritage Gallery dealt in uh, such a variety of precious antiques. Yes, we do. <laughs> so many beautiful things, so little time, huh? Oh. Furnishings, art. Astonishing. I mean, this is fantastic. Yes, it is, isn't it? Very beautiful. Yes. Was there something in particular you wanted to talk to me about, Detective? I have work to do. Oh, we won't keep you, Miss Holden. It's just that I can't get over all these beautiful things. Do you know a man named Wally? Wally? I don't believe so, should I? Well, not unless you're planning to help him rob this gallery. You found me out, Detective. I keep a stocking mask in my top drawer and the uh, machine gun's over there in my cupboard. You are joking. Are you? How long have you worked here? My God, you are serious. 
Uh, I started work January of this year. Look, Mr. Donahue can tell you all about me. He did a background check that would have given me a CIA clearance and, um... Are we making you nervous? You seem kind of tense. Well, I am a bit edgy. I'm, uh, late on a deadline, and I'm, uh, falling farther behind as we speak. I don't know anyone named Wally, but if I do run into a Wally, I promise you'll be the first to know. I'm sorry to have seemed inhospitable. Not at all. It's a pleasure meeting you, Miss Holden. Be sure to buy a permit for that machine gun. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your time, Miss Holden. I wish I could have been more help to you. Is the gallery really going to be robbed? Life's full of surprises. <laughs> so? Nothing. I could have told you that. Matter of fact, I did. Hey, uh, John, I'm yeah. sorry this thing didn't work out for you. I really am. Ah, don't fold till it's your turn. That Holden woman knows more than she's letting on. Come on. There's nothing about that woman that doesn't spell class. She's uh, pretty good looking, too. Yeah, but I've been waiting for a case like this for 22 years. I understand that, John. But there's nothing about the woman that even suggests that she could be involved in something like this. I think 12 and a half million can bend the classiest person. Let's call it a hunch, okay? Whatever you say. Excuse me. The kid said that Wally's partner drives a red Jag, right? Yeah. Must be his main squeeze, huh? Or maybe he's that deadline she mentioned. You want to follow him? No. I want to run a jag through the computer. Well, Tara Holden's boyfriend is one of your basic unsavory types. You still think I'm howling in the dark? No, oh, come on, don't gloat. I hate when you do that. You know, I am starved. Come on, you can buy me some cholesterol. Can we go someplace where you don't have to sit on stools? I said 24 hours, it's been 24 hours. I want 100 bucks. You get a real possible here, Lieutenant. Give me till dark to work her. I'll make a double or nothing. How possible? The gallery's PR lady. She's involved with a guy who has a couple of priors for receiving hot property. His name is Edward Lapata. He did two years at Denham Moore in 81. The girl's name is Tara Holden. She checks clean. Seven o'clock, John. Something with some spine in it this time, with this one's history. Thank you, Lieutenant. By the way, don't count your money yet. Listen, take some personal time. I want to waltz with her cheek to cheek. Yeah, hey, I bet you do. Give me an hour. Come in. Hello, Detective. Rollins. John Rollins. How you doing with that deadline? This job is nothing but deadlines. I really am very busy, so if you could tell me what I could do for you. It's quite an eye you got. How do you give that to you? I don't see that that's any of your business, and I'd like you to go now. Perhaps I better call my lawyer. Maybe you better. You can tell him you're under investigation for conspiracy to commit grand theft. That's a felony. He can meet us at the 21st precinct. you like a cup of coffee? I mean, I know a little place. It's close by. It's nice and quiet. You can talk. There may be a way out of this. I don't know what you're talking about. You really do have your priorities screwed up. You know that, Tara? Is he worth it? No. He's an 
animal. He said he'd pour drain cleaner down my, my throat. Oh, God. a month after I started work, around the 1st of February. He'd come in nearly every day on his lunch hour. We started dating, and I fell in love with him. About three weeks ago, he told me what he was going to do and how I was going to help him, and what he'd do to me if I didn't. I tried to talk him out of it last night, told him we would never pull it off. Gave me this as a sample of what I'd get if I tried to back out. So he doesn't know we've been asking around. You think I'd be sitting here if he did? Well, how much you know about his game plan? Nothing. I swear to God. He said he'll tell me what to do when he wants me to do it. He doesn't like questions. So tell me about the auction. It's the 16th. Invitation only, 10 diamonds. That's it. I heard the figure 12 and a half million. The Whitehall diamond alone is worth over 6 million. Haven't you heard of it? No. 72.4 carats. It's one of the largest privately held stones in the world. Do you like some more coffee? No, thank you. No one's supposed to know it's in the auction. That was part of the deal made with the elderly English woman who owns it. No publicity. She's a total recluse. The diamond hasn't been seen publicly since 1939. It's all been kept very secret. So how did Eddie find out? I don't know, but he knows. Will I be arrested? Well, I'll tell the DA you're working with us. My bet is immunity in exchange for testimony. If anything goes wrong, you'll have protection. If something goes wrong, I'll be dead. Interview with suspect Holden concluded at 11.07 a.m. She was advised to keep us informed of any and all contact with Eddie Lopata, et cetera, et cetera. You're a smug mother, you know. What are you, a hundred? Double or nothing. Double? That's 200. I'll put it on your tab. How big's my tab now? I don't know, five, ten grand tops. And I'll never get to retire. Listen, how far is this Holden one willing to go? As far as it takes to stay out of jail. I've already talked to Grossman in the DA's office. He'll deal. Well, then I guess you better brief the chief. Brendan, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to bird dog him. Huh? Anything, anything that he tells the chief, I want you to tell me. You got it? Why do I always have to be the grown up? Day, he said day oh. Forget days, cause we're doing years. Day, he said day, he said day, he said, well, forget the days, boy, cause you're doing years. Diamonds are in the gallery. Daylight come and the bad man fail. Cause cops are waiting in the alleyway. See the bad man, he go to jail. Day, he say day oh. Forget days, you do in years. Day, he say day, he say day, he say, well forget days, boy, cause you do years. Hey, funeral today, John? Worse, the chief. Woman called for you earlier, John. I, I wrote it down. She says it's important. Ah, uh, here it is. No. This. No. Uh, was it Holden? Tara Holden? Uh, I wrote it down. Very important, she says. Uh, here, have a Danish. You look thin, John. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> the green. Ah, here it is. A Tara Holden call important heritage gallery. I knew I'd find it. Your prince. In progress, you want to go see? Yes? Tara. John Rawlings. Oh, I'm glad you called. He wants the floor plans to the gallery, the alarm systems, and the safe's location. It's good. It's good. Did you give it to him? Yes. 
Are you okay? I'm scared. Really scared. Are you sure this is the only way? It's the only way the DA will play. Look, everything is going to be fine. You just relax. I'll come by to see you later. Okay? Thanks, Nazette. Well, you're obviously ready. Thanks. So let's go. You know, I really hate this. Ah, uh, relax, okay? Yeah, well, my palms are all sweaty. I feel like a kid going to the dentist's office. <laughs> well, if you play your cards right, you might get your photo taken with the chief. It'd be something to show your as yet unborn generations. You know, your suit smells like mothballs. It doesn't get out much. Good. Good, solid police work, gentlemen. Yes, your contact with this olden woman appears to be uh, bearing fruit. <laughs> Uh, do you have this Pilata? Lapata. Lapata person under surveillance? No, sir. Uh, so far, no direct contact. We're taking our cues from Tara. Uh, Miss Holden. Oh, well, you should. Well, you should, yes. Well, all right. Now, let's put this on the front burner, gentlemen, huh? Yeah, this appears to be much more than a conspiracy case. Oh, my, yes, yeah. Well, if we handle this right, we can bust this bunch in the act. Drop the hammer on them while they're committing the very robbery. Yet, do you realize what this could mean to this department in the way of public trust and confidence? Hmm? I mean, the press, the media will go wild. NYPD foils largest diamond heist. Am I understanding you correctly, sir? Are you suggesting we allow them to rob the gallery? Yes, of course. That's exactly right. But we'll be right there waiting for them to catch them with their pants down. No, we cannot waste an opportunity like this, gentlemen. No, no. With the Holden woman inside the gang, why, we'll know every move they make. It's foolproof. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll take it from here. We need the very best men we can get on this job. Johnson. Sir. With all due respect, sir, it is our case. We turned it. We'd like to stay with it. And I think I should head the special team. Oh, you do? Well, you're not a man who's plagued by self-doubts, are you? Hmm? Tara Holden is the wheel this whole thing turns on. And I have established a relationship with her. Now, if I am not involved, I doubt she will be. She's so fond of you that she'd rather face prison than be denied the pleasure of your company. Is that what you're telling me? Hmm? She trusts me. You cut me loose. She's going to panic. And without her total cooperation, this thing is never going to come off. I'd like to put together my own team with men from the 21st, sir. Men that I know and trust. Who the hell do you think you are, mister? I wouldn't ask for this responsibility if I wasn't damn sure I could handle it, sir. If I don't perform satisfactorily, I'll step aside. You have my word on it. He'll report directly to me. And Rawlings... If you screw up, there won't be a hole deep enough to hide in. You're excused. shaky, but I'm all right. The eye looks a lot better. The power of makeup. Yeah. It's for you. How sweet of you. It's lovely. It's... Oh. It's an ashtray. I made it myself. Just a token of my appreciation for everything you do. Oh, I'm touched, really. I am. I'll always treasure it. We better go up. I uh, don't want to keep the man waiting. Yeah. 
Am I to understand, sir, that you expect me to furnish these thieves with the with the with the very tools they need to rob this gallery? Yes, sir. That's a bottom line, sir. Uh, we feel that it's this the best is preposterous. Way. And I don't like at all you're using Miss Holden as an informant, exposing her to that risk. I'm in no danger, Mr. Exeter, unless Eddie Lopata realizes that the police are on to him. If I don't continue the charade, there aren't enough cops in the city to protect me. You can help put these men where they belong, sir, behind bars. It's foolhardy. It's very dangerous. Your diamonds will never be in jeopardy. These men are under constant surveillance, and Miss Holden will provide us with the newest development in their plan. It's foolproof. Of course... There is one alternative left open to us. Ah. Huh. What might that be? Cancel the auction, sir. Canceling the auction's out of the question. I can tell the chief we have your cooperation. Very well. We're all at your disposal. I believe it was Herodotus who admonished us that if the world were just, there'd be no need for valor. Herodotus? I believe that was Plutarch. But I really don't have time to discuss it. Very busy. Thank you. Mr. Exeter. Now, this Whitehall diamond has some kind of history. Sir Charles Whitehall bequeathed it to his mistress in his will. He was 45 when they met. She was 17. <laughs> and they were lovers right up until his death in 1938. Well... Miss Waring must have been a real scorcher. The wages of sin pay pretty well. How old do you think she is now? About 80? Yeah. She's a total recluse. Never leaves her estate. The diamond hasn't been seen publicly since 1939. Tara says the terms of the sale are Tara so secretive. Tara says. It's all I've heard lately is Tara says. You two got something going or what? Look at me. You old dog, I don't believe it. She's young enough to be your sister. Yeah, forget it, okay? I don't mix business with pleasure. Well, if I were you, I'd turn my badge in because the lady's hot for you. God only knows why. Will you come off it? I mean, you are more her type. All right, I admit it. I'm jealous. And I'm also impressed because I never thought she'd play this hand out. The lady's got a lot of brass. How long do you think before Eddie makes his move, now that he's got all the goodies? Well, the auction is just around the corner. And so are we. You got anything like a beer in that vegetable patch you call a refrigerator? It's empty calories, pal. <sighs> you know, this health kick of yours, it's killing me. Hey, what are you doing? Look, just let me smoke, OK? I mean, I, I'm allergic to the smell of sweat. You can smoke on the terrace. I will smoke out on the terrace. on for Monday night, the 16th. The Whitehall diamond comes in from London on Sunday, and the rest of the diamonds will be delivered Saturday. I'm supposed to let him know guard schedule. Could you the please start again, slowly? Yeah, just one step at a time. Every detail, OK? Take your time. According to our source, the two men will hide themselves in this third floor storage room when the gallery closes at 6.30 Monday afternoon. Now, at 10 p.m. sharp, they'll exit the storage room, make their way across the gallery, through this corridor, and into this stairwell. Emerging on the fourth floor, they'll make their way down this corridor and into Mr. Exeter's office, and that is where we'll be. Lapata, driving a panel truck, will be waiting outside. Now, we'll have sharpshooters on the roof and extra cars to block the streets. So we call the two bad guys in this fourth floor office and Lapata on the street. 
Chief Vadney will be in personal command, and I would like at this time to thank him for his help in planning this entire operation. we stopped? Where are we? I don't understand. Didn't the cops tell you? We're robbing your gallery, and you get to play on our team. I want to know such thing. Perhaps we should discuss this with your wife. Problems now. Relax, Donahue. Your diamonds are safe and sound. Yeah, wrong. We just opened the safe. All the diamonds are gone. The Whitehall? I said all the diamonds. What the hell do you mean, you stole the diamonds? They were in your safe, in your office, in your building. And you're telling me you stole them? I'm telling you I had to. If they had my wife as a hostage, they would have killed her. Three men were killed tonight, and the chief of detectives was wounded. It's too bad you couldn't warn us before we went through this little song and dance. When I returned here with the diamonds, they knocked me out with a pistol butt. My poor wife was gagged and bound to our bed. She couldn't move. When I came to, I managed to untie myself, and then I called the police. This the guy? Yes.
Yeah, I got more good news. They ran a check on Tara's apartment. It's cleaned out. She's gone. My horoscope said this was going to be a bad month. But... Dr. Jackson. Excuse me, Horace, can you give us a report on Chief Vandy? I mean, how's he really doing? I mean, is it a serious... You carved your name in stone tonight. You're going to be famous. Could have been one of you guys. Nah, he was in your line of fire. It wasn't your fault after the Chief moved from his original position in total darkness. <laughs> I shot the Chief in the keister, John. I shot him right in his big, fat... Dr. Chief Vadney is back in his room. He's conscious and he's stable. Is there a Detective Rawlings here? here. Chief Vadney would like to see you. Detective, sure. Stay with me. Yes, we'd like to Sir, How are you feeling, Chief? Do you need three guesses of Rawlings? We've got an APB out on Lapata's Jag. Exert and his wife are okay, but they're kind of beat up. And the Holden woman? Haven't you heard, sir? Yes. I just want to hear you say it. Gone. Building super saw her carrying a suitcase down around one o'clock. Really? And are we surprised at this news? Hmm? Do you have any idea about how the press is going to handle this? Hmm? If I could get out of this bed, I would kick you right where your partner shot me. Yes, sir. Is there anything else? Yes. Get the hell out of here. Five ten, 115 pounds, brown hair, hazel eyes. John? Lapata. John, just came in from City Connecticut. 15, they found your red 16, jag lying in a surf a little north of Greenwich. Crack it on this morning, burned to a crisp. Two bodies inside, one male, one female. Yeah, thanks. Brandon, let's go. All right, yeah, check all passenger manifests out of JFK yesterday afternoon and evening. Right. Right. Brandon, are you with me or what? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. There must have been a real fireball. You know, I figured it come around that curve up there too fast and just kind of sailed on off and it exploded with impact. What about skid marks? None, none. His foot didn't even hit the brake pedal. Uh, we're gonna have to ID him with dental charts. Uh, there are a couple of real crispy critters. You should have seen them. Give me a break, huh? Brandon, come here, take a look at this. Oh, 
That sucker's got to be a full carrot, maybe more. Yeah, and the rest of them are probably on this beach, or washed out by the tide. Yeah, well, that car landed with terrific impact. They could be scattered all over. I don't know, wonders for your tourist trade. Hey, has he got a problem? Yeah. What do you think Lapata did to her to make her fold on us like that? She seemed like she had it together. Everybody's got a breaking point. He found hers. She trusted me. Hey, John, you don't get bonus points for guilt. What, do you think she'd still be alive if you hadn't got involved? Forget it. Lapata was going to waste her no matter what and then ride off into the sunset. Now, you got to believe that or you're going to eat yourself up. Come on, let's get out of here. Yes, uh, I was in charge of the operation, but I can't comment at this time. The investigation's still continuing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, listen, sir. Uh, frankly, you're wasting your time and mine. That's your idea of a joke, pal. I suggest you keep your smart-ass remarks to yourself. Yes, you may quote me. Vultures. You might want your lawyer to check out some of these quotes by the chief. The only thing he doesn't blame me for personally is Pearl Harbor. I told you this one to make me famous. So this is the white hole done. Let's take a little ride. I'll drive. Yeah, be my guest. Senior badges. I, I know you guys are NYPD, but Mr. Exit is not gonna like this yeah, one damn yeah. bit. Keep your shirt on. Yeah, I could lose my job. Tell you what, pal. You want to file a complaint with the commissioner? My badge number is 3026, okay? has not been seen since 1939. How come she's got this photo? Be careful. He's in a foul humor. Well, I'm glad his condition has improved. What's so important it couldn't keep Rawlings? I don't think Tara Holden was the helpless pawn of Eddie Lapata, sir. I think she set the whole thing up and he was working for her. Oh, please, please. There is a photo of the Whitehall diamond at her office in the gallery. It's a beautiful photograph in living color. It's also what? The Whitehall diamond hasn't been seen publicly since 1939. Hmm. How did she get the picture? I just... Obviously, she had access to that diamond, sir which means that she must have some connection with its owner, Ruth Waring. I mean, the whole thing is starting to smell like an insurance scam. An insurance scam? What are you talking about? Well, let's assume that the diamond is heavily insured. Now, this Ruth Waring arranges the auction, 
and she hires Tara to steal the diamond and bring it back. This way, Waring ends up with the diamond and the insurance money. Go on, go on. But once Brenda and I stumbled into it, Tara knew she couldn't pull it off. We'd be watching her. Unless she was a victim. She could make us believe that she was working with us. She could still make it work. We'd even help her. That's it? Case closed? Not quite. What if it wasn't Tara Holden in that car? Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, Rawlings, it's going to take many years for you to work the stink out of your clothes in this one. Yeah, I just had a report on the dental charts. They match perfectly. Yeah, the dead woman is definitely Tara Holden. Tara Holden? Definitely. Uh, close the door on your way out. Ed, the dental charts match. It was Tara. I tell you, you know, she's smart enough to figure this whole thing out, and then she buys it in some corny car wreck. It's, it's too pat. It bothers me. Okay, what are you thinking about? Well, talk. The dead woman was Tara Holden. But maybe she wasn't our Tara Holden. And what if she assumed the dead woman's ID from the get-go? And all along, her plan is to snuff the real Tara if something goes wrong. Cops don't chase dead women. Yeah, and I can see you selling that to the chief. Idrisi's got a cousin who works at the morgue, doesn't he? What are you afraid of? We're all policemen. This could get me in a lot of trouble. I could lose my job. You need a court order. Permission from next of kin. If I didn't stick my neck out for you, you'd still be peddling rugs in Syria. Cut. Mm. The body is so badly charred. I can go directly to the chest cavity. Uh, I'm going to make a phone call. Sure. Your suspicions are correct. Once we're past the exterior charring, clean tissue, pink as bubblegum. Thank you. What's that? What are you? Oh, gosh, you. The dead woman was not our girl. What? What? Dead woman? Oh, they've well, got a great psychiatric ward here, John. Chief, I've call. just oh. come from the morgue. The dead woman was not a smoker. Hmm. Her lung section is clear as a bell. Hmm. Now, Tara, or whatever her name is, was a heavy smoker. The whole thing was a setup. Hmm. Hmm. Chief, can we run this to the last lab? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. She assumes the dead woman's identity, and then after the heist, she kills the real Tara and Eddie Lapata. Mm. She stages the car crash, figuring that we'll quit looking, knowing that she's dead. Mm -hmm. She scatters a few small diamonds at the scene just for dramatic effect. Now all the players are dead, and she keeps the rest of the stones. Well, so we lost a few of the rocks when we got the bad guy. Then let's leave it at that. No, no, the lung section clearly shows. Oh, it... stuff the lung section. If I don't follow through on this, Chief, she'll get away with the whole thing. Mm hmm <laughs> Okay. I'll cut you a deal. You'll cut me a deal? Yeah. You get me a Jane Doe fugitive warrant and clearance from Scotland Yard, I'll buy the plane ticket to London with my own money. <laughs> if I'm wrong, you get my badge. You'll take early retirement? That's right. How early? Immediate. Congratulations, John. You cut yourself a deal. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Good night, Chief. 
Goodbye, Wellings. <laughs> jet lag by the time I landed in London. Just as well, anger wasn't gonna help me. I was sure Tara Holden was still alive, but I didn't know where. So my only move was to contact Ruth Waring, the owner of the Whitehall Diamond. We better get going. The chief soup is waiting to meet you. I, I can handle it. Flipping idiots out of your whole department, didn't he? Who was the genius who got sucked in then? Me. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm afraid I've got a real knack for putting me foot in it. Our papers said the whole gang wound up dead, so why come chasing about over here? I fought on a hunch, on my own time and money. Everyone was outraged when Miss Waring lost her diamond. She's quite famous over here in a small way. Mistress who made good. Now, don't be cynical, Johnny. She's almost a national treasure. The Whitehall legend is one of our great love stories. I bet you're not too popular with your chief right now. Pretty sure he's crossed me off his Christmas list, yeah. <laughs> we'll get on. The chief super hates my guts. my shoes. Why? My chief super would chew out my you-know-what if he caught me in these. I mean, why can't we wear comfortable shoes? I'd like to see him in a pair of these. Chief superintendent. Ah, Detective Rawlings. Rawlings, that's it. Chief superintendent Kellogg. It's a marvelous man, your chief, Adney. We worked together before in America. Ah, uh, well, he sends his best, sir. Yes, I trust that he'll be out of hospital soon. It was uh, a thigh wound, was it? More or less, yes. Mm. Rotten luck, this business. So, shall we go? Oh, uh, do join us, Detective Sergeant. I see you're wearing proper shoes. That's a refreshing change. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. This theory of yours is preposterous, Detective. As I understand it, it was your incompetence that led to the theft of Miss Waring's diamond, and now you come up with the extraordinary idea that she was behind the theft in order to collect the insurance? We have to examine every possibility. If I'm wrong, I will be happy to apologize to all involved. If it weren't for the regard and affection that I have for Chief Vadney, I'd put you on the first plane out of here. An insurance fraud? <laughs> That's ridiculous. I just want to talk to her, to establish a connection between her and Tara Holden, if, in fact, there is one. No, 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 that's impossible. No, she's in no condition to be hounded or harassed. I realize she's 80 years old. I will be as gentle and diplomatic as possible. But if she is involved in any way... My God, you don't know, do you? I don't know what. Miss Waring suffered a massive coronary when she heard about the theft of the Whitehall. She's clinging on to life by a thread. <laughs> Knocks your theory into a cocked hat, doesn't it? I'm very sorry to hear it. But 
I would still like to continue my investigation. With your permission, of course. You're headstrong, aren't you, Detective? Yes, sir. Very well. Detective Sergeant Lawson will continue as your liaison, if that's all right with you. Yes, sir. I would remind you that you are a guest in this country, and I trust that you will conduct yourself accordingly. Understood, sir. I'll say this for you, Johnny. You've got a nerve. <laughs> I would have told you about Miss Waring, but I thought you knew. Question. Are you carrying? Do I look it? No, I mean a gun. Oh, we don't carry firearms. I feel naked without mine. I never worked a case without it. Oh, you'll get used to it. Right. Where do we begin? Uh, Ruth Waring's home. Mm. It's a bit of a drive. It's near Epping Forest. But don't worry, I'll get you there in no time, love. I bet you will. Mm. to get a search warrant. You people do use those, don't you? Listen, you can't use the loo without one. That'll do. Don't you have to show due cause to get these? There wasn't time, was there? Uh, this is just a shipping invoice for some furniture. You just flash it, love. Nobody reads them. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Estate agents? A police officer, sir. Oh, madam is not at home. She's taken ill. Yeah, uh, we're very sorry, but we'd still like to come in. We'd like to talk to you. Well, I'm not sure that Madam would approve. Oh, I'm sure she wouldn't mind. We do have a warrant. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Is there anyone else here, sir? No, I'm the last. Madam got rid of the maids a month ago. And the cook just last week. It was a terrible ordeal for her. The loss of her diamond was the last straw. Yeah, what happened to all the furniture? Sold, sir. The whole lot. To meet household expenses. <laughs> but I feel as if I'm gossiping. Not at all. I'm going to take a look around. Now, if it's all right with you. Uh, I won't touch anything, I promise. What happened here? I thought the old dear was rolling in money. Swindled by her solicitors. That's why you've come, isn't it? You still got a kettle about? A cup of tea would be lovely. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Miss Waring. Artie says that when they had Artie? to go... 
That's the butler. Oh, that was the butler. Tomorrow's his last day. He said she worked for days over selling the Whitehall. But it couldn't be helped. That's all she had left. Furniture and silver gone, no buyers for the house. Yeah. She spent it all. Yeah, but she is going to get the insurance money. And if I'm right, the diamond as well. I think it's time we talk to Miss Waring herself. You know which hospital she's in. Mm, it's close to London. But they won't let us see her. Intensive care, you know. You don't have any doctors and nurses uniforms in that little trick bag of yours? If you'd have let me know. <laughs> from the doctor. And I don't care what kind of warrant you've got. Look, you're very dedicated. I admire that in the helping professions. We just want to look in for a moment, kind of answer a question. And look, I've told you only with the doctor's permission. He'll be here within the hour if you want to wait. I'll wait. I'm going to go and have a cigarette. Sure. Just joking. Mr. Kirby, are you telling me that Miss Waring is not belly up? Belly up? Bankrupt. Good Lord. Ruth Waring has more money than she could ever spend. Well over six million pounds, I dare say. Well, I don't understand. Her butler says she's penniless. The maids, the groundskeepers have been cut loose. There's no furniture. Haven't you seen the house? No. You haven't? Miss Waring is a bit eccentric. She hasn't left her home in over 40 years. She doesn't hold with telephones. She communicates by mail only. Well, somebody set her up. Miss Waring thinks she's broke, and that's why the Whitehall Diamond is up for sale. When did Miss Waring first contact you about arranging this auction? First November last, we received a letter from her vehemently stating that the diamond was to be put up for auction immediately. We were all stunned as the diamond was all that she had left of Sir Charles. Didn't you question her? We did, sir. I even went so far as to ask her granddaughter. Granddaughter? I thought Miss Waring never married. Oh, dear. I fear I've divulged a confidence. Uh, this is official police business, sir. Fleet Street won't get hold of anything you tell us. Miss Waring bore Sir Charles a daughter out of wedlock. In time, this daughter married, and Miss Wedding became a grandmother. Then tragedy struck. Her parents, her daughter and husband, were killed in an automobile crash. Today, Miss Waring's only family is her granddaughter, Sarah Easton. When Miss Waring brought up the auction business, I contacted Sarah at once, but she assured me that Miss Waring was in complete command of her faculties. Mr. Kirby, uh, how much does this Sarah Easton stand to inherit when her grandmother dies. She's the sole heir. I don't get it. Why pinch your granny's diamonds when she's bound to die soon and leave you everything anyway? Some people want it all at once. You know, this Sarah Easton is the only person close enough to Miss Waring to run this kind of con. I think we should talk to her. Get an address? Sure. Right. Thank you. I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, all right, Detective Sergeant, step on it. Oh, here it is. 
Easton. Miss Sarah Easton. Hello. Keep your eyes peeled. I use this to adjust me carburetor. warrant to search these premises. Tell me, when was the last time you saw Miss Easton? Last evening. She's in trouble. Thanks for your help, Mum. Sorry to bother you. Oh, no. If this is Sarah Easton, I bummed a light from her yesterday at the hospital. In New York, she called herself Tara Holden. Should have known. has got the law on to us. I do not believe what is going on. Perhaps breaking and entering is all the rage with the New York police, but I will not stand for it. Sir, all we were trying to do Look, was... Look, it just... was our only option at the moment. Now, I thought... You thought? I see no evidence of brains being used at all in this situation. And as for you, young lady, trying to pass off a furniture invoice for a, a legal warrant? Your actions are inexcusable. Sir, will you authorize a search of the Waring estate? Now, I know the diamonds are there. I didn't have that much chance okay, to really right. search this. All right, department. all right. We will search the estate, and we better damn well find something. Rollins, are you satisfied? We have been through this place with a fine tooth comb, and we have found nothing. Do you know what your little adventure has cost the Yard in man hours? Well, I was sure we'd find them, sir. Well, from this point forward, you are removed from all participation in this case. I will call Chief Badney and advise him. Ah, yes. Detective Sergeant, your involvement with this man ends with your depositing him at his hotel. Is that clear? Yes, sir. for you, sir. Thank you. Well, Kellogg didn't waste any time calling Chief Adney. My partner's on his way over to pick me up. He'll be here bright and early tomorrow. You'll be checking out then, sir. Don't push me. Come on. I know a lovely spot for dinner. My treat. decent crease I've had since I've been in this country. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in with me, Charlie. Mm. We shouldn't have come back here. And listen, if she shows tonight, there's nothing you or I can do. You know that. Yeah, I know yeah. that. I just want to see her. And I want her to see me. I was going to go a cop that broke the biggest diamond heist in history. I'd like her to know that it was me that nailed her. 
Revenge is a kind of wild justice. Bacon said that. He knew his stuff, didn't he? So come on in, let me buy you some breakfast then. Yeah, I could do with a bite, thanks. Mr. Rawlings, uh, there's a gentleman waiting for you. Oh, don't tell me. Your watch stopped. You know, my clothes went out of style waiting for you at the airport. Well, it's nice to see you, too. Uh, allow me to introduce my partner, Detective Sergeant Charlie Lawson. This is my partner, Detective Brendan Thomas. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Johnny's told all about you. Thank you. John, look. I don't like this bounty hunter stuff any more than you do, but I'm not going to push luck with Vadney. Now, do me a favor and pack your things. We can still make noon flight. Aren't you a little curious? Oh, I assume you were right, as always. You can tell me on the plane. John, I shot that man in his behind. Don't make me rub salt in the wound, please. Okay. Um, can I uh, have a minute? Yes. Thank you. Well, I guess this is it. Thanks for everything. They can say we didn't try. That's right. When we get her, and we will, I'll make sure she knows who nicked her, okay? No, I'd partner with you anytime, anywhere. What are you gonna do? I got the day off. Well, drive carefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I miss you. Me too. Right, take care. <clears throat> okay, Warden, you got me. However, I believe I am entitled to a final meal before I walk that long mile. Okay, you buy, and we're not lingering over coffee. Absolutely right. It stinks, John. Bust your butt nailing this thing down, and the let's come along and take all the headlines. Uh, hey, but one thing. When they do get her, Vadney will never be able to retire you. Mr. Rawlings. Telephone. Thanks. Mr. Rawlings. Yeah. You what? Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, give me the pen. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Just slowly. One thing at a time, okay? Right. Yeah. A green Mercedes. Right. Okay. You stay right where you are. We're on our way. And listen, if you were standing here right now, I would kiss you. Yeah. Charlie's got her. Here we go again. Taxi. No sign of the diamonds, Johnny, and I don't think you're good at a talk. You want to bet? 
get around in the car. I'm no see, Tara. I'd much prefer Sarah, if you don't mind, John. Call me sentimental. Cuff her behind her back. No. The way I figure this, we helped you pull this job. So that kind of makes us partners, right? The only partners not that aren't dead. Isn't that a shame? The real shame is you're down to your last two choices. Now, you can give us the diamonds, or you can take a double rap for homicide and spend the rest of your life in the joint. It's your choice. Try again, John. This time, something a bit more original. You made a fool out of me. I was one year short of retirement. Going clean. I was good and you screw that up. And I figure that's worth about 12 and a half million bucks. So, you can give me the diamonds, or I'm gonna take your teeth out. Oh, don't, right, Johnny, now, you I can't do shut that! Up. Hey, John, why don't you just... Back off, Brendan. Now, you give me the damn diamonds, or I'm gonna mess up your face! Give me the I... diamonds! I left the diamonds at the fence in Portobello Road. I would hate to think that you would lie to me. Put her in the car. I'll tell you, I've been around the block a few times, but I can't figure this. You'd have inherited a fortune clean and legal when she died. Which she should have done ten years ago. A girl can't wait forever, John. So you convince her that she's bankrupt, at least on paper, so she's got to auction the stone. So she'll have money to survive. And then you uh, tell her the insurance policy lapsed. You are a John. Bravo. But um, how did you get past the charred body that was positively identified as me? You smoked too much. Tara Holden didn't smoke at all. Who was she? Eddie's girlfriend. She was them over last year. We met at a gambling club. Her voice found the gentleman a bit seductive. She kept me on my toes, didn't you, John? I kept having improvised to keep the man alive. I do sorry about her, poor stupid little thing. But she had no tears over Eddie. He was scum. I'll sleep better knowing that. Run, Necessary. Take them off. You know, it's a shame. They look good, Coom. No, no, come on. Give me a new client. It's all he gets. Anything else, and I'm taking you down. You understand? I love it when you talk rough. Look, you keep that up, you're gonna earn that pop in the mouth. You understand? Promise. Hey, John, do you really think I'd let a perfect stranger hold my family juice? <laughs> <laughs>
I told you, you gotta quit smoking that pipe. Come on. Scotland Yard or Buster or Interpol. She's not gonna get away with it, John. Don't worry. She got away from me. Oh, don't blame yourself, love. Uh, she didn't swallow the damn diamonds. They're somewhere on that estate. I just know it. That's our flight. I have the tits. I'm gonna call New York and tell them we're on our way. <sighs> she wouldn't let a stranger hold the family jewels. You know, I know the diamonds are somewhere in that house. To know it. The pool. We never searched the pool. You could throw the diamonds in the pool, they'd sink right to the bottom. You could look right at them, you wouldn't know they were there. You take care of Brendan. I'm gonna get a taxi. <laughs> Okay, we're all set. Where's John?
Johnny, what the hell think you're trying to do? Well, she took Mercedes now. Someone left keys in it. She's got dives again. What are you gonna do? Wait, let me grab this and pull. Ah, she's too cheap for that. She'll ditch the Mercedes. She'll try to pick up another car in the nearest village. Now, there's no such thing available. Wish you can call a taxi. Possible, if she can get one to come out far. Now, what are we supposed to walk? I think I've an idea. Hey, what are we supposed to do? Are you in range, Shane? Keep up the pace. this car what can you hotwire this car I'm supposed to be taking you back to New York John and now you're asking me to hotwire a car yes okay Two minutes. Heathrow. Heathrow. Uh, that's a journey. I'll oh, move a minute. Face it, Sarah, you're outclassed. <laughs> 